Central Coast, Australia, Jamie Mulaki. Jamie Mulaki, thanks so much for inviting us into your neighbourhood of the Central Coast, mate. I tell you what, it's bloody paradise out here. What a spot. Mate, it's the best spot in the world. I've lived here my whole life and nothing's wanted to make me uh, leave it. <laughs> Introduce us to your little mate who's joining us today. Yeah, this is Reginald. Reggie. Yeah. So, went to school around here. Did you grow up like playing footy or anything? Yeah, so I went to school at Erinna High. Always in the sports, man. I played every every sport that you can think of. Soccer, cricket. Then I got into <clears throat> rugby union. Played a bit of basketball. I was actually watching the Ultimate Fighter at the time, so kind of like... What I, season? Season seven with uh, Amir Sadala. The coaches were Forrest Griffin and Rampage Jackson. In the off-season of footy, I just I, I wanted something to do, and I, instead of going to cricket again, my brother was telling me about um, this little uh, youth fitness thing. Literally on my first day of going there, I threw a kid down, got the mount, threw an armbar on him, and like was just hooked ever since. You didn't hurt the kid, did you? No, no, I didn't <laughs> hurt him. Oh, my dude. kid, this wasn't like a Kramer thing where you're like 20 years older than everyone. <laughs> no, 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 we were, we were both 14 years old, okay. so e even match up. So you were just a natural sportsman, you played every sport. Was that always like a dream of yours? Like, were you saying from a young age that I'm going to be a professional athlete when I grow up? Was that ever nah, the goal? No, nah, it wasn't. Nah, nah. I, I think I wanted to be a musician, eh? Really? Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> I, I played drums in high school. Did you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I played uh, drums in a, in a couple of little bands coming through high school, and we were always saying that we were going to make it in the music industry. <laughs> and Actually, that died down when I, when I came into MMA. So, so I was taking drum lessons and everything. Yeah, right. Yeah, so yeah. you resulted in the dreams of your fellow musicians being squashed because you decided to follow MMA, is that right? <laughs> well, if you want to put it like that, but <laughs> actually the, a couple that I did play with, uh, they are still gigging to this day for a living. Right. Yeah, yeah. What was the band name? Uh, Fire Trio. Fire Trio. Yeah, gotcha. that, that yeah. Was, it was three of us. So, any, yeah. any MySpace pages still out there? No, nah, <laughs> nah, I, I think that one's gone and, that, gone and dusted. We just like to cover like sort of bands like Incubus, U2, John Butler, all kinds of music like that. That was our, our kind of vibe. That's the thing, I was okay at everything. I was not really good at, at anything. And then fighting came along. <laughs> Right, and yeah, then you yeah. found yourself a UFC fighter now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the most just, competitive division. <laughs> it, was, it was just like one of those things. Was there a bit of pushback from your family and friends? Because like this is, what, 15 years ago? Mm. What, 2008-ish? Um, not really pushback, but I think there was a little bit of confusion from my parents. <laughs> Because they were like, why would you want to do this? <laughs> <laughs> I competed as an amateur all the way up until I was 19 and started my pro career um, in, on the Australian circuit. So then pretty much from when I made it as a pro, like when I, when I started fighting professionally, that's pretty much when I, wanted, I knew I wanted to be in the UFC. Um, so that was, the, that was the goal, just to, to push for that. And um, here we are. They will be fighting for the AFC featherweight title. Fighting Alexander Volkanovsky. Tell us that story. Oh man, that was uh, that was a humbling experience. <laughs> I'll, I'll put it that way. Um, nah, Alex was like the man at the time. Yeah, obviously the man in uh, the country to beat. I think he first fought a middleweight, welterweight, and he got down to lightweight. I saw him at the airport, and I was like, sort of sizing him up. And then I was like, "See, so you're gonna stay at lightweight?" And he was like, "No, nah, I'm gonna drop the featherweight." And I was like, "Whoop." <laughs> I was, I was kind of shit myself, yeah, yeah. And then uh, all of a sudden, he was the the guy to beat, um, and had uh, the the most belts in the in the country. I thought I was invincible. Yeah, uh, I was nine and zero as a as a young twenty year old professional fighter. I was talking confidently, put it that way. I was, <laughs> oh, I was, a bit of trash talk. Not trash talk. I, I I never said anything disrespectful, but when I got asked questions by interviewers, I. Oh, I sounded cocky, for right. sure. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely sounded cocky, and uh, I, I just learned a humbling experience, man. I got, I got knocked out in the first round against him, and um, he was always a, like a legend of a bloke. You know, Volk, he's yeah. just a, a, a great bloke, and he, he came to me backstage even after the fight and was like, man, you're going to get back, you're going to come back from this and use it as uh, 
use it as motivation and uh, we'll, we'll get training together one day. And, and here uh, you are preparing him for Yair yeah, Rodriguez just recently. Yeah, the international yeah, we're, we're, we're working together. So it's, it's, a, it's a pretty cool thing when you, when you look at that. Like um, a lot of us that were on the local scene together trying to make it. Um, and now we're, we're all helping each other. We're all helping each other get ready for battle. So it's, it's pretty cool. Oh, oh, he's down. Malarkey's hammering away. Wow. Jamie Malarkey. You said the dream was always to make it to the UFC. You achieved that dream a few years ago. What is the dream now? I mean, are you satisfied just fighting in the UFC, or, or do you look at that strap? Because, you know, it's, it's a question that I ask all fighters. And I often go, does the belt matter to you? And half of them will say, yes, that's what I've always dreamed of. And then the other half are like, I'm just a prize fighter. I'm here to make money for my family. Where do you lie on that spectrum, Jamie? It's like, um, it's like both for me, but that's exactly right. You, you sort of hit the nail on the head <clears throat> where the goal was to make it to the UFC. Now I'm in the UFC, it's not enough. Mm. Now I want to get into the top 10. Um, that's where my mind is now. Like, I'm looking short-term goals. So realistically, I want to I want to make that top ten in the next year, a uh, year, say two years maybe. And um, ultimately, the goal is to, to win that belt. Whether that'll happen or not, I'm I'm honestly not sure. But I'm going to do everything in my power to to try and make it happen. Speaking of short-term goals, UFC 293 in only a couple of weeks' time. John McDessie, how excited are you? for that belt. Yeah, super excited. Super excited for this fight, man. Um, John McDessie's a, a crafty veteran in the sport, and um, I know he's going to be a, a tricky puzzle to solve, and we're, we're doing everything. We're ticking all the boxes and uh, leaving no, no stone unturned. So it's going to be a cracker fight, man, and um, <clears throat> I'm just looking to make a statement in this fight. And fighting so close to home as well, UFC Sydney, how good? Yeah, man, this has been a... Haven't fought in Sydney since 2019, so um, it's been a long time. And uh, getting that home crowd energy, it's, it's gonna be something special. Um, yeah. Like we felt it in Perth when we went and fought in Perth, and uh, it's gonna be even more so in Sydney for me. <clears throat> Just uh, like family, friends that have like been there since day one. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that means something to me too, so it's, yeah, it's gonna be a lot, uh, a lot of good energy coming into that fight. That's the cool thing about uh, about the fight community. Though. Mm. We're all like, for what we do to each other in the in the ring, it's like a unbreakable bond that you share with someone when you've actually gone to war with them and um, fought to the bitter end. Uh, you, you just share a bond with them that's uh, pretty special. And then the the community, the fight community itself, we all we all back each other. Like you know, it, it, even with the Aussie boys. We're all we're all mates, um, and yeah, it's uh, it's it's pretty pretty cool, I think. Well, Jamie, we can't wait to see you in action, mate. Thanks so much for your time today, and thanks for inviting us into your home. Yeah, no worries, anytime. <laughs>